if you're looking for a data privacy and compliance for your website and your business, this session is for you. Hi, I'm Anil from marketingautomationfocus.com. Let's dive into it. Today, I'm talking about an app called Concord, C-O-N-C-O-R-D, Concord. Their website is concord.tech. And if you're watching this video, uh, then you can see on the screen, it's their homepage, concord.tech. Their tagline is data privacy simplified. And by the end of this video, you will know Concord's features and uh, their strengths uh, in this area for data privacy and compliance and how you actually implement this. I will first show you their high level features as uh, shown on their website. And then I'll take you to the back end of the app uh, inside of my own account. And I'll show you how I have implemented uh, uh, for one of my websites. And so let's let's look at this now. Uh, so uh, first, let me just uh, show you really quickly, as they say on their website, this product has at a very high level uh, four features, uh, consent management, privacy request, data mapping, and integrations. And the solution, which means that what sectors or what niches uh, this uh, app actually supports, which virtually actually could be any type of business that requires the data privacy and compliance. And consent management uh, is, is a very critical piece of it. So th this app actually uh, covers this, uh, those areas, for example, e-commerce, financial services, healthcare, government, software, startups, and open source. They also have a bunch of resources. I'm not gonna mention those on, on this video and I'll show you about uh, their pricing at the uh, time of this recording. So let's, let's just uh, scroll down. So consent and trust, user preferences and privacy controls the features um, for consent. Uh, modern design and easy customization. And that I'll show you inside of the app here uh, in, in a minute. And, and then uh, you, you have compliance and protection. So your company or your data is, is at risk. And so you need to comply with the regulations like CPRA and GDPR. The app has data mapping and then it records compliance. And then it also has uh, compliance automation and workflows. Now there is there is power and simplicity. What does that mean? It's the easier compliance with global regulations. So you can actually implement that at a global level as as you may need. And it it has real time scanning and blocking. Okay, that's very important. Identify verification and security. And then the privacy, so why do you need this privacy? Okay, what, what, why do you need this data protection and, and, and why do you need to be compliant, right? I mean, this, this, is, uh, this is based on the region and regulations. One thing I would like to mention right here is, is a disclaimer that I'm not an attorney. I'm not a compliance or data privacy expert. Uh, so it, it, please check with your uh, attorney and data privacy and compliance uh, professional uh, to make sure that uh, you are doing the right thing uh, and 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 so forth. So for your business and for your for your use for your website and your business. Now, so what what are the key features does it have? Uh, consent management, as I mentioned before, privacy request handling that's very important. Unified privacy center, and I'll show you that. And detailed compliance logs and engagement and results and then data mapping, which actually you do as part of your setup, okay? And so let me take you now at the back end of Concord inside of my own account. So now I'm inside of my Concord account and uh, it's the first view is dashboard. It's really 
nice and clean, uh, no overwhelm here. The dashboard basically shows you uh, based on uh, how many people, or like how many sessions, privacy requests, if any, and the consent events that occurred. And then each one of, it, one of these have uh, a link to a report related to the number of sessions and privacy requests or consent events. So I'm not gonna click on these as yet, but or maybe let me cl click on this. And this goes to analytics, key metrics, which I'll show you in a bit. Let's go back to dashboard and click on view report for privacy. Now it gives you the privacy request request log, which is zero for now, as the dashboard says, and then consent events view report and it actually shows you which I had done a uh, couple of days ago uh, prior to this recording. So it shows you that, uh, lots of data here. Let's go back to dashboard. Dashboard on the top left, it shows a view of all your projects. So uh, you can select the project. So I have a default project set up when I uh, initially set it up. And then a couple of days ago or so, I did this My Mental Mission is one of the websites uh, that I have. And, and so I'll show you that as a, uh, how it looks and how the privacy uh, uh, center is uh, implemented and how it looks, and then a few other things I'll show you. So let's move on to, so we already talked about the uh, analytics uh, key metrics. I was just playing with this. Initially, actually, it will show you uh, all the menus actually fold it up uh, and so now uh, we already looked at the key metrics uh, and key metrics uh, now has uh, date date visitor sessions unique visitors consent events compliance requests so this is a, a good way of looking at the data now you can sort this in reverse uh, chronological order. So I kind of like that. So I click on this, but the first click I noticed, maybe this is intentional, that that column is selected. And if I click again, then it will sort it uh, in a reverse order from what it was showing. So now you can see that right now I actually visited once. So it shows that there is one visitor session and there is one unique visitor because there is no other visitor right now. Uh, so this is accurate. And so now let's let's move to the real uh, sort of meat of it, of it in, in terms of how uh, you would set up consent and, and your uh, consent or cookie uh, banner uh, and the privacy center. Uh, so click on consent, let's fold the analytics back up Consent has consent settings, consent banner, privacy center, cookies and scripts, and consent log. So these are the sub menus as part of consent. So consent settings now. So by the way, when you create a project, I would actually, let's go back to dashboard. Um, I forgot to mention that it might be a good idea to have a, uh, uh, create new project uh, right up here on the top right or someplace where it makes sense that in case I arrive, I log in, I arrive at dashboard and I wanna create uh, a project. So I don't have to click anywhere else except just that uh, create uh, a new project. So that would be good. So that's one thing that I would like to mention. Now go back to consent settings. Uh, consent settings have two sections, general settings and consent types. Now, uh, they have very nice uh, tool tips, uh, which is this question mark here. So I'm not gonna read this, but this is quite helpful. If you uh, wanna familiarize yourself with what blocking modes uh, are or what those options are. So basically it's either disable, discovery, permissive or strict. Uh, so depending on your needs, you need to select one of these. And I, in my case, I just like to go with the strict blocking mode, which means that, um, which let's just see what they say. 
uh, for strict strict mode will only allow strictly necessary and ignored cookies and script until user consent preferences are set so 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 this is what i like to do for for my website or website that i work on uh whether it's mine or my clients websites uh, that uh, i like to put it as strict uh, and i let the visitors uh give their consent okay until then i block them all as as mentioned in this option consent mode is again uh I don't wanna uh, have anything implied. I, I wanna have it express, expressly uh, mentioned or selected. So it, it tooltip actually tells you what that means and I'll let you read that if you need to pause this uh, video, if you're watching the video. Now then there's option of enable do not sell consent. Uh, tooltip is right there. You can read in my case, I have enabled it, then enable what's called limit sensitive information consent. Uh, so even if people give uh, limit uh, sensitive information consent, meaning they have the consent, they wanna have a limit on that, okay? So, and it means something, okay? So you need to learn that, uh, what that exactly means. And, and if you wanna have that option enabled. So in my case, I have an option uh, enabled, as you can see, that toggle switch is switched on to enable it. Then the next one is enable global privacy control. So what's also called GPC in short, and you can read the tooltip. In my case, I have actually turned it on. And uh, because uh, for my website, the demo website is not intended for outside of United States at this point, but I chose to just uh, turn that on for now, assuming that most of my websites are actually kind of uh, worldwide or some key countries outside of United States. And I wanna make sure that um, as much as I know that even if within US, if, if I'm in the US, my website headquarters or my business in US, uh, I wanna make sure that I respect privacy of people outside US, even if the laws and regulations within US do not require that uh, of me. So I that's that's just how I roll um, and your mileage may wear, vary. So uh, let's now move to consent types. So there, there are a bunch of them that I believe that these are turned on by default as soon as I select certain settings. And the last two as part of the project setup, the workflow, which is not what I'm showing here. Otherwise, this video will become too, too long if I were to just go through the steps that I went through to set up this project, which means this uh, website or domain. Uh, so for that specific domain, I you, you can actually select the uh, you can choose the privacy policy and terms of service. So by the way, uh, Concord uh, doesn't have a privacy policy uh, generating or generation feature uh, right now, but they're working on it as far as I know. And for the terms of service also, they don't have that uh, feature within Concord. Uh, they, they may have that in future, but for now, uh, I know that they currently working on privacy policy generation. But for now, I already had uh, the terms of service and privacy policy uh, for this demo website, uh, the project, my mental mission. And so I basically added this and the, uh, and the app Concord actually walks you through this. And so it's very easy. You just uh, create a name, whatever one you want to call. You want to call it terms of service or terms or terms and conditions, whatever you want to name on this. And then you define the URL for your website. So I already have that. So it's already hooked up now. And, and then same thing with the privacy policy, okay? So privacy policy generally is implied because you got to start somewhere, right? That's what implied means that that consent type that the privacy policy exists, then that's got to be implied. You know, the users don't get to uh, 
decline or reject that. I, I don't want to see privacy policy, right? This is so kind of obviously um, doesn't make sense, right? So that's why it's it's implied. Um, uh, what is this category? Let's just quickly um, check there. Yeah, consent states. Okay, so I was looking for that. So th that is implied. That so now let's go to consent banner. So it's very simple. Okay, there's not something really fancy, cool design. You don't need to. Uh, there is some branding, and I I would uh, I'll get to that uh, in a moment. And when you actually create a project, then it walks you through in a proper steps and workflow uh, and asking you questions about the branding and colors. And I'll show that to you in a minute. But uh, basically, uh, one thing to point out is that um, even if you select to not show the banner, I don't know why you wouldn't. Uh, maybe there are some cases, I don't know. But if you choose that, but you will see the banner here because you got to see it to 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 set things up whichever way you want, right? Uh, so that makes sense. Within Concord app, you'll see uh, the banner always, whether you select choose to show or not. And then again, there, there, there are a bunch of tool tips here, okay? And I'll just hover over uh, position. I selected bottom, theme, I like light. They, they have dark themes, so it kind of real time it, shows you it looks pretty good. So, you know, it's well thought out and well designed. So there's no, you know, I as far as I can tell, maybe there's contrast issue only because, or could be because of the branding color that I chose. So obviously that's up to you, uh, what uh, branding color and theme you wanna uh, uh, specify and select to make sure that there, there are no issues in terms of, contrast or people being able to see and read things. So uh, I'm going to save and so keep saving, show banner title. So banner title. So again, it's real time here shows you right. Uh, banner title text, you can uh, customize that a little bit. Privacy policy. So since it's defined as part of the uh, setup uh, for the domain and, and for the project, then link text is view policy. You could say view my policy. So it's real time uh, change, right? You can see see over here down where I'm pointing with mouse. And then banner text, you can customize uh, the text shown on your consent banner, link text. So tool tips are really nice. I really like this in any app that has tool tips, it's awesome. So I think they've done a really good job on, on this. And then, oh, okay, so it says confirm. Do you want to abandon them? No, uh, maybe they should have a save button here. If you say, okay, then it's like abandonment. I think there should be an option that, okay, save and continue or something like that. I would do that rather than having me to click cancel and then go back here and save it, right? Um, so that may be uh, something minor improvement on user experience. Uh, privacy disclosures, show disclosure, uh, privacy disclosures title, and then the statement here that you can, uh, you know, again, tool tips are there to sort of guide you. Uh, so you don't have to go back to knowledge base or help document what are these settings. So that's why I really like the tool tips, privacy request, uh, description, what you wanna see, and I'll show you what these look like. Uh, option, button, text, see my options, change request title, change request description. Um, and, and so for each type of request, whether it's change, delete, um, uh, you know, uh, do not sell uh, request title. They, they all have the description and, and the title that you want to actually see uh, in the privacy request. Um, okay, so, uh, and then the consent history, if you wanna show 
the consent history in the privacy center and I'll show you that as well and the consent history title so you can change that instead of consent history you can say consent log or whatever uh, whichever makes sense to you and 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 you prefer based on your needs uh, then there is this floating uh, button in this case I chose uh, this privacy uh, coming from uh, like a tab if it's a circle then it shows up here like a like a cookie type icon here that you might have seen uh, uh, on the internet on various websites uh, I chose when I look at the tab um, even though it doesn't have the cookie uh, kind of uh, icon there uh, I like that to move it a little bit up because I may have something on the bottom left on my website so that kind of helps a bit uh, if you have other things or widgets going on on my left bottom of my website uh, button theme uh, you can button themes you can have your brand color so I've chosen brand you can choose light or dark or whatever uh, button position um, you know right now is is left uh, this one so I guess if I if I uh, go with light so it becomes light it's it's really nice to, because it's it's immediate you you know uh, so it's basically uh, you you get what you see what you you see what you get or or one of those things um, and then you save okay so so basically uh, so I think um, so we are under user experience and under user experience there's website experience they call it uh, which is fine and then as part of uh, all of this uh, consent banner uh, which is sort of it goes to off to a different kind of page or section right that's why it moved down to where user experience menu is on the on the left uh, sidebar right if where where I'm pointing right now is website experience so it kind of jumped from consent banner to over there depending on uh, where you are so now so that consent banner is basically the under the website experience okay and then privacy center now uh, so privacy center is the same one that right now as it stands so it can get a little bit confusing but since if you notice here that as soon as you move to consent banner then consent banner privacy center those two are part of the same uh, consent banner uh, menu here at least that when you move to that you can move through the different tabs so to speak and, and one of them happens to be privacy center uh, setting so then it jumps to that uh, that section or page uh, here so then the cookies and scripts is is what what you have on the website already uh, that that those cookies were detected and and so here just to point out it actually detected these cookies and scripts because um, I did not remove IU Benda uh, script uh, from that website because I had that installed so um, and I might have used this Google Tag Manager I don't remember uh, so that's what you see and you see uh, the uh, the website uh, core which is mymentalmission.com so that's what you see here so it, it looks looks correct and the consent log so this was the one that when I was working on the website uh, which was actually two three days ago I uh, was working starting pretty late on the 23rd of August and then then there's some disclosures and and what the action and state of of the consent was and the subcategory was a privacy policy category was disclosure okay and privacy setting I must have done something like do not sell an action uh, it's kind of neat to see that um, user click so I click to decline meaning I I actually selected to say do not sell so it's kind of double negative there 
but um, I'll touch on that a little bit later, maybe. Okay, so so that's what do not sell uh, uh, option there that we talked about earlier. Now uh, let's move on to privacy request. Okay, so the request settings. So do you want to enable the privacy request? Do you want people to uh, request uh, certain um, uh, privacy related uh, requests that they want to make, uh, which which I'll show you what those are. So I'll just tool tip it. It shows you there. I'm not going to read it and enable do not sell requests, which these two, uh, I believe it was already part of consent settings, I believe. Uh, at least I remember do not sell request enable was the setting there. So it just tells you request settings. And there's lots of space here. So I think for future, uh, this can be used here. Now let's go to privacy center, which is again, uh, privacy center. Maybe I think they're, they're working on this stuff. So uh, I'm not sure if they're going to keep privacy center at two places. Uh, this They may have to do this because if someone is working on consent and they want to kind of go through this menu to go to privacy center, uh, then they have to do that. Now, as part of the privacy request, you kind of have to look at the privacy center uh, as well. So I guess it's somewhat duplication, but if you don't need to go there, you don't go there. If you need to, you have a couple of options as part of the two menus where privacy center is a sub menu. Okay. So that takes care of that. Then if there were any requests uh, made, then there will be a log of this. This is very important to, uh, to be compliant uh, and uh, uh, based on the compliance that you need, if if you need to have the privacy request from your users or your website visitors, then you got to keep log of what happened, right? Um, otherwise, you can't show uh, your compliance. Or if there were questions about some user request or a visitor says, I requested X, Y, Z, and I'll show you those three or four requests uh, related to privacy, what those are, and then you want to have a log of it, okay? Uh, so so that's why it is, this is really important. Uh, so you got to make sure that uh, whatever app you're using uh, that has uh, the proper uh records or or logs of of all the requests and consents and everything so that's why the under privacy request you got to have request log so let's fold these up and for user experiences again we already touched on website experience which is basically is nothing but uh your privacy or cookie banner and the privacy center and also the floating button. The, that button typically is hiding behind your, your privacy banner or cookie banner, some people call it. So once either is rejected or accepted or just simply close the banner, that's when you see that uh, floating button or widget uh, of privacy uh, banner or privacy center along with consent settings. And I'll show you in, in a second here. And for branding, as mentioned before, in this case, it, it looks kind of weird because I didn't choose, uh, I don't think it's Concord's issue. Um, maybe they can enhance it a little bit, but um, since I just simply used uh, sort of a logo mark instead of just logo, which typically is rectangular shape rather than a logo mark, which typically is um, somewhat square shape. So just the way it shows up, but I'll show you, point this out, how it looks in the privacy center, which is part of the 
the banner uh, once you get inside of privacy center uh, uh, of, of this Concord and how it looks. And, and then you can read up about the primary color. It gives you right here. You don't have, th this is awesome because uh, you know, as much as we all like to help, and I'm sure they have help docs. Actually, I do know um, uh, because I've I've used it a couple of times just to see what's there. And when I started off, I just wanted to say like, how do I get started, right? Even though I really actually didn't need to, but it's really good to see that uh, their documentation is really nice. And I'll, I'll show you if you stay stay with me uh, a bit. And secondary color, uh, color uh, uh, Concord branding powered by Concord. So if your plan uh, has the um, uh, the uh, uh, you know option to uh, enable or disable uh, powered by Concord, then then you can you can do that. Uh, I just remembered that uh, I didn't speak uh, about the pricing, which I can do that after I'm done here. Now, one of the most critical items here is data mapping, uh, which means that you need to select the data systems and properly map them with different attributes that applies uh, to you and your business and your website and your systems that you are using. So in my case, I just was Kind of trying things out, um, and I believe that when they come out with uh, privacy policy generation feature, that they will scan your domain or your website, and they will detect certain scripts. Are um, almost almost everything I believe, um, uh, to my understanding, they will scan everything and then uh, suggest or. Uh, actually add those data systems by default, and then you go back and review those. At least it's it's a lot uh, easier and, and actually efficient. It'll save you time if once, once they actually implement that. In this case, at the moment, you need to go in and actually select all the data systems that you are using for related to your business and your website or that domain. So in my case, I know that I, I may use ThriveCard. Uh, and so I I actually, so you can just, let me just click on, on here. Let me move this. So if I add a data system, now uh, it, it shows you a whole bunch of data systems. Depending on your plan, you may, may not have, you may have certain number of data systems, access to a certain number of data systems. You do have a custom option here. So I clicked on custom. If you click on custom, let's see. Uh, it's not coming up. Hmm. Not sure why. Let me see if I go active. Oh, um, sorry. So uh, once you once you collect, maybe what, what it needs to do is just when you click on a system, you go to the next step. I don't need to uh, click on, I forgot that. Uh, when I set it up, it was obvious to me, but right now, so for example, uh, you know, I, I just did Thrive, so it just pops out uh, with Thrive Card so that it's dynamic in that sense. What I might like to suggest to them when I'm typing Thrive, you know, you may, may not need to keep this popping up, but this list here would be narrowed down dynamically, right? And then once I click on that, then it will automatically go to the next step. Uh, so, but in any case, it, it, let me let me click on, uh, let's just click on custom for now and click on next. And so I'm not gonna go through everything here, but uh, basically there there's some, uh, built-in uh, options for origins, destinations, processing purposes, processing activities, data categories, um, cross-border and retention. Uh, so they have a tool tip here again. And if you needed, uh, uh, for example, anything here, pretty much origin, destination, processing purpose, all of these options, if you needed 
that's something that's not listed here. So basically, you know, it's, it's totally customizable, right? Uh, so you can add origin, right? You can type the name, you can describe it, and you, you just got custom origin, right? For most part, for your mileage may vary, but for most part, I think these, these cover pretty much almost every type of, of uh, individual uh, categories or um, data related to data, uh, ev everything that you want to know, origin, destination, processing purposes, processing activities, data category, blah, blah, blah. So all of this stuff, they, they, they just have a whole bunch of option here, okay, that are, you know, pretty much covering, I would say 99% or more even uh, uh, needs out there. And then you can follow the steps here is, is you just, you, you may feel overwhelmed, but really there is no need to feel overwhelmed. You just, you, you need to know your system. You need to know your business. What kind of services you're using, which data systems is basically, what kinds of services and platforms you are using in your business. So if you're using Facebook, okay? So depending on, you know, what you're doing with Facebook, right? Let's just type uh, Facebook, okay? So Facebook, okay? So now I probably didn't have to select, click this again, like I was saying before. But anyways, now you you define what, what, you, what you're doing with Facebook. And they may add actually subcategories in case of Facebooks and the social media platforms, it can be um, not just simply one thing. So you may, they may have to come up with a sub data system, so to speak, right? Meaning, what are what are you doing with Facebook? Is it a login? Is it you're protecting some personal uh, uh, PII information, uh, or what are what exactly how you're using that? social media platform like Facebook or Instagram, right? So so not just this one thing, one Facebook, right? So they may actually uh, do enhancements as far as uh, I know going forward. But that gives you a pretty good idea. So I just chose one at this point uh, as an example for this website. And let's go over to attributes. So. Uh, attributes are for data mapping, like for whatever data system that you add, then there are a whole bunch of things that you need to understand. Um, some of it I already mentioned, but when you actually set it up, then they actually the steps, Concord will actually uh, guide you to each step, which is not what I'm showing here because I'm already done. And like I said, you know, otherwise this video will be as like a huge tutorial, maybe for a couple hours or maybe at least an hour. It's already 38 minutes, this video. So let's move on really quick. So the attributes on the data systems, you need to map that. That's why it's under data mapping. Okay. So you need to map different uh, attributes to your uh, data system. So ThriveCard, in case, you know, okay, who's the processor? Join controller, right? Data system, and is join controller is data system, controller, sub processor, okay? So it's just defining these, and then you can see that the join controller in this case is ThriveCard as well, because again, I'm not an expert on this, so I could be wrong, but so based on my understanding, they control some of the information as well. So that was my thinking. That's why I chose that it's a joint controller is ThriveCard. So I'm controller, okay? So that's that's what this is, okay? And a sub processor here. And, and, and so you need to really understand, which I can't go, uh, into details in this uh, review uh, of Concord. So the other settings basically uh, 
are are what I already showed you, like processing activity, but it's in a different view after you actually done uh, adding a data system. And, and you could add, again, it gives you an opportunity here after you created one or more of your data systems and you map them already as part of the process, right? Of adding a data system or even initial setup, uh, even for the just one data system like I did. So then it still allows you to do further data mapping or adding any of these attributes, whether it's origin, destination, processing purpose, processing activity, data categories, uh, and security measures and, and contacts I left blank. It allows you to leave blank, but, uh, it's something that, uh, you need to understand. And I need to understand some of this stuff that what exactly applies to me, my business and my website. So that's, that's that. And then, uh, deployment. So deployment, uh, domain, uh, as I mentioned, um, this, my, mentalmission.com uh, regions um, I, I this one was default uh, this you can edit and deploy settings I'm not going to show right now well I could show you but but it just simply gives you the general setting and there's an option for custom script and then there's embed code okay by the way they're working on so in terms of the deploy settings and embed code. Right now, it's just simply the um, uh, JavaScript code, which I've already embedded, but they're gonna have uh, Google Tag Manager and Google Consent uh, uh, Policy uh, version two or something like that. Uh, so they're working on that. that that's any day now, uh, as far as I know. And and so let's, let's go to global settings. Uh, let's fold this up. Let's go to projects. So in terms of my account, I have two projects. One was, as I mentioned before, default. The other one is mental, uh, my mental mission. And then they, they actually assign the org ID and project ID and date created and date updated. This is really nice to have everything that you could possibly uh, need to know and or uh, log and 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 save the history okay then their users api keys integrations let's go to integration uh right now is zapier they're working on um uh different uh they're actually changing a little bit uh on the ui here so it's gonna be a lot more uh a bit better uh organization here in terms of ui in terms of the menu on the sidebar and the integrations there are a few things that that are coming up uh, pretty soon in the next uh, few days or, or within a week, um, as best as I know. Then billing and then organizations. So that's, uh, that's uh, I'm not gonna go there. Let's, let me just now uh, take you to that website and show you the banner and the privacy center. So this is the website. And as you can see, I visited uh, again today, and I have not taken any action on the uh, privacy or cookie banner. Uh, and uh, right now, do not sell or share my personal information is uh, turned off. So that's, uh, I believe that's allowed. And, and so if I want as a visitor to turn it on, I can do that. So I haven't denied or accepted uh, the uh, all the uh, all the privacy uh, or the or the categories of the uh, data uh, uh, related to privacy. So I'm just going to click first customize here. Now in this case, um, if if this is my new visit and then there was no uh, uh, cookies left left over from my previous consent, uh, so I don't know. Uh, it's because of that that is showing these four uh, different uh, categories like analytics, functional, marketing, unclassified. These, I believe, should not be turned on uh, by default be 
if unless until I actually explicitly, uh, you know, accept them or deny them. So, so let me show you. So this, this is consent settings. So it says my settings here. So now I'm going to go to click on. So privacy center. And by the way, on the, on the top of this pop out here, which is privacy center, uh, as part of the banner is, is that, uh, my logo or icon, um, uh, that I was talking about that so that's how it looks. So it, so this, that's what I had. So it doesn't look bad at all. And then you can choose this background color, um, as I showed you before. Uh, so now, uh, let's, let's, so, so privacy policy link is there. Terms of service is there. This all checked out. It says that, uh, it actually recognized that I had, um, so maybe that was because of the cookies, um, that, that I didn't clear the cookies. So this was, uh, August 23rd and the privacy policy was implied. And so now if I go to, uh, let's just see privacy options. So see my options, which is actually privacy request options. So it's a, if you want to get a copy, change data, delete data, don't sell or share. So these are the options you can, you can fill in or the visitor can actually fill in and, and then submit that request. So I haven't, uh, tested these, uh, so cancel out. Um, and if I want to go see my options again, I want to say change data again. It's a similar, uh, user interface for your visitors to request, uh, to make that request. Delete data, don't sell or share. You can, they can, they can request here as well. So that's basically privacy request options there that I had mentioned before. And then consent settings, I already showed you. Now let's just, if I confirm choices, then it's just simply going to confirm these choices, which I can change here. Okay. The strictly necessary uh, uh, category is always active as, as it should. So let's, um, cancel out here. Since I've not taken any action, the, uh, the banner actually, uh, keeps showing until I actually, uh, expressly, uh, actually select something. So let's say I, I go, I go deny all. Okay. So I denied all. Okay. So now the privacy widget or button, as uh, they call it, and there's probably a widget or button in this case. So when I click on, on this, then the privacy center pops out really nice. And as you can see that I actually declined just now, August 26th, strictly, well, sorry, strictly necessary, which is as of now. So now it detected that I'm a user that I saw privacy policy, which is accepted um, and privacy policy, which was implied on the first time in on August 23rd. So all others that I declined are actually showing up here as of today, right, right now. Okay. So, so this, this is, this is really, really good. Uh, and then consent settings, if you go, then since I denied all, now these are all switched off and this is declined, right? So it's, it's, it's really nice to have, uh, this kind of, kind of a privacy center with consent settings, uh, for the users or visitors, uh, of your website. Now with that, I believe I've covered pretty much everything. I'm going to go back to, uh, just show you pricing really quick from their website. Okay, so we're back to Concord's website and just wanted to show the pricing plans uh, here. For based on annual billing, they have a free plan, Essentials, which is $29 per month, uh, Pro Plan, which is uh, $99 per month, and premium, which is $249 per month, uh, based on annual billing. And now, uh, I'm going to just quickly scroll and see, uh, the features for each plan and, and 
you can see the comparison. So you can visit the website, take a screenshot of this if you would like, um, and, and look at the details of, of each plan there. So uh, that's all uh, for now, and I'll see you in another one. Bye for now.